You've probably heard of family trees as a way to trace ancestors, but scientists also use them as a way to work out if children might develop genetic disorders. I'm Emma, and today we're learning how family trees work. Family trees are used to show inheritance. This is often used whenever there is a family history of a genetic disorder, like cystic fibrosis. You will be given a key to use to figure out some answers. Here's an example. Males and females will be given different shapes. Shading is then used to indicate if the person has got the disorder. Okay, so here we've got a man and a woman. When they're joined by a horizontal line, this means that they are parents. A vertical line with branching other symbols means that they've got children. So we can see these parents have three children. If they're adult children, they may have a partner of their own and form parents together. The best way to understand family trees is to give some questions a go. So pause and try them and then press play when you're ready to go through them. So always start by looking at the key. Okay, number one, what is the genotype of an affected male? Well, this is a cystic fibrosis family tree. And as we learned in the last video, cystic fibrosis is caused by recessive alleles. So we need two recessive alleles to have the disorder. Lizzie and Amir have a healthy daughter, Eva. What symbol would she have on the family tree? The key here is she is a healthy daughter. So we're looking for an unaffected female. So we're going to give her a blank circle. And if you can, use black. Okay, what is Eva's genotype? Genotype just means what allele she has. So we already know that she's unaffected, which means she has a normal dominant allele, which she got from her dad. But her other allele will have come from her mother who has got cystic fibrosis. And therefore, she can only pass on a little c to Eva. So Eva's genotype is big C, little c. Four, what is Sarah's genotype and explain how you know this. So let's find Sarah, here she is, and she's also an unaffected female. So because she's unaffected, she must also have a big C or dominant allele. But how do we know what the other allele is? Well, we need to look at her children to see what she and Tom have passed on. One of her children has cystic fibrosis. One allele came from Tom, but the other must have come from Sarah. This means that Sarah must have a recessive allele herself, as she passed it on to Lizzie. Try to use names in your answers if they've helped you work out the answer. So she's big C, little c. And finally, Kira and Alex are both carriers of cystic fibrosis. How does the family tree provide evidence for this? So just a reminder, carrier means they've got one recessive allele and one normal allele. So they're both big C, little c. But how do we have evidence for this? Well, we can see that they've got children that are affected or have cystic fibrosis. But if we look at them, we can see that they haven't got the disorder themselves, which means they must be just carriers. All right, how did you do in the questions? The next videos are all about variation and evolution, which I think are really interesting. Click here to watch them and here to subscribe if you're finding this useful. Thanks and bye.